I don't know if I talk about him again. I want to, like, in future projects, because I feel like that has a heavy impact. But yeah. Um, alright, well, like, let's say you fucking watch this shit somehow. Let's say you fucking stumbled upon this shit. God knows when, 10 years from now, 10 days right. from now, 10 hours from now, right? All these conversations shit. What the fuck would you want to say to him? Alrighty. Chase Cheney, I'm here to talk about my magazine Temporary Pleasure that came out on June 19th. Um, what inspired it? Uh, I just wanted to talk about just my views on everything, and it got narrowed down to like um, the objectification of women, and so that's like the motive behind this actual magazine. It's just something that you can witness like on a daily basis, you know, like through social media and just daily in person life. And, I don't know, it's just irritating to see, like, the way that men talk about women and kind of, like, a vice versa. But I feel like, from my bias, it's that men heavily objectify women. So that was just, I was just frustrated. And then quarantine, so it was finally, like, the perfect opportunity to do something, you yeah. know? I just did it so I had no more ideas left. Was this quick? Was this, like, a month, a year? Um, How long you wanted to do it? Like, I guess, like, three months. Three months of work? Yeah, it had like a, a different plan for it. Like I, it was supposed to be like poems and photography. And yeah, like I had a couple of photographers that I met with and we had the plan, but then again, quarantine, ha quarantine happened. So I had to, you know, just, I guess, improvise. Senior year, I started writing poetry because the class was such a blow off and I was bored. And I developed a relationship with my teacher. I was like, hey, is this good? And she, you know, she didn't just say yes, like she kind of gave me feedback. So from there, I just started writing poetry. And that was like my, my outlet, I guess. So I just kind of tried to articulate like my thoughts. And I felt like poetry is just like a good structure for that because it doesn't have to make sense right off the bat. I mean, I guess the way it tells a story, you know, just like whatever's like appealing to me, I guess I just try to not manipulate it, but just put it together in a way that tells a story. Kind of like with music, like the production style of it. Um, page eight and nine. I gotta flip to it too. This one, I guess, cause it'll go up on the screen. It's like, a, um, what's, I guess a disclaimer. I, don't, I forget the word, like trigger warning, I guess. Because I mean the, the <laughs> page nine, the poem is rape. And it is a trigger warning, but it, that was like one of the first poems I wrote. It was originally like a script for a video, but I wanted to, I don't know, just make it better, I guess, and really just edit it and try to really make someone feel, that, that was like the first poem that I wanted to provoke emotion with, you know? And I feel like this poem out of the entire magazine really like shows the purpose. I guess I just went into writing everything with that it was gonna be for someone like 
if they read it, they would feel something and it would be like a way to cope, I guess if that makes sense. And I, I don't know if that sounds silly because rape itself and like sexual harassment is so like traumatizing and it changes your life. And you know, like it's a simple poem and if they read it, you know, I don't know what they'll do. But it's just, the intentions are that they feel something and that they can relate to it, you know? Because, and I want, I want people who like haven't gone through any type of like harassment or, you know, like people who haven't been objectified just for their body, I want them to like feel angry at it, you know, for angry towards the people who are guilty of doing that to someone. You know? I guess the anger throughout, not just the poem, but the magazine is like the anger that I have. And I'm like articulating everything and like with my anger, a part of that. And so I want to provoke anger, but I just really want people to like be more aware and you know compassionate towards people because doing the magazine i talked to so many people and they would tell me a story about something that ha happened to them you know and at that point it gets so like not overwhelming but you hear it so much that it just becomes like a like for making the magazine it became like a daily part of my life you know like i'd hear a story and it's like that's fucking terrible but like it the way they said it they weren't angry at that point you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it was just like, it's a part of their life. But it makes me angry because of the way, not that the way that they handle it, but the way it's normalized, if that makes sense. And they can't, whenever they speak up about it, they get blamed or they just, you know, they're not justified in my eyes. And that's what made me angry. And that's kind of the anger that I wanted to provoke, you know, with whoever read it. And I mean, I can speak from personal experience and not related to... A sexual encounter but with taking drugs like as like a, a coping mechanism like I that was me at one point in my life and it I guess from like a narrative perspective it sucked because you know that's not a way to like handle life you know and with me it was like Xanax right like you take however many and then just knock out for the rest of the evening because of whatever like branch of life was affecting me you know and I think that the way that ties into, you know, like, for instance, the girl in the poem, it's just like that way to forget about the rest of, the, you know, like just go to bed for the evening and not have to put up with whatever feeling she's having. I guess it can just be so overwhelming. Either aspect of it, either the drugs can be so overwhelming or just, uh, I guess mental health. I don't like the word mental health because I feel like it's so broad when it's mentioned, but that aspect of what she goes through in that poem was just overwhelming for her. Uh, this poem is titled Clary, and she's, um, she's a friend, and I like her name. That was the reason for the title, so <laughs> hope she enjoys that part. Um, but yeah, this is a short little poem. And I, I'm not gonna show it because it's. But I like the face. That was the main reason for picking this page. And um, it's. I don't know. It's kind of just to say that how you can talk to someone. I guess that was the motivation behind this poem. And um, so, hold on. I gotta gather my thoughts on this one. Okay. Alright, so I guess this one I wrote because I was upset with myself at the time and the lines that I used, I've like used in real life, if that makes sense. And I think, and I'm guilty of it too, you know, like the way that you can approach a woman can very be very um, like one tracked, like you have one mindset. You know, and it's very uh, selfish, and like your intentions like aren't pure, and they're very sexual and selfish again. And so, I just tried. I just put the lines in there that like I've used. I changed them up a little bit, but the as her lips lower from my cheeks to between my legs, it was me at the time when I said it to the girl. It was like. I'll like start kissing your neck and then move my way down but it was just like a, a rehearsed line you know and that was however long ago but it was selfish and I was mad at that but I I feel like me doing it someone else has done it 
you know? And I don't know if you can gather all that from just reading the lines, but that's just like a small detail that I wanted to add in it. No, that's exactly what this is for. It's not, like, the, the magazine is, like, not all directed towards, like, other like other people and other aspects of life. It's also just, like, reflection of, like, what I've done and, like, what I don't believe in anymore, but what I used to believe in, you know? Yeah. And... Again, with the visuals, it's just something that I thought was cool. And I, 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 I like that it has Ron teeth for his mouth. Because, like, you know, what I said was just fucked up and shitty at the time. In general, it's a shitty thing to say if you're, being, if you're going into it with a selfish outlook. The artist I reached out to, I saw him on Instagram. I was like, hey, can I put this in a magazine? And instead of using the photographers, that's kind of what it became, just reaching out to people and like stuff that I thought was cool that would fit. Alright, let's go to the next one. Uh, 15. Begging for a woman's seduction and then maddening nimble throats, women are sweet relief. I feel like those three lines, to me, when I wrote, put them on the paper, was... Whenever, like if you're just upset with whatever, you know? depressed like anxious anything and if you're just wanting to act impulsively I feel like these three lines could come into mind like just wanting to have like the comfort of a woman but again in that selfish way like just thinking about her throat you know and it that like her her throat being a relief for me for example it's just a short little line but just showing like the impulse and the thought if that makes sense How, what's the deal? is it supposed to be like a masculine thing and it's like, like, like a pink like no nah, I just thought it was cool yeah. <laughs> my I was writing um in my house and um my brothers like they have like a big ass crate of Hot Wheels and it, again, it was in quarantine, so we were bored as shit and didn't have anything to do, and so Hot Wheels came out. And I was like, these are actually kind of cool, and I need, like, content, I guess. So I just took a picture of it, and then that was that. And on the teeth, um, on the page to the left, is um, his name's Sam, and he's he's 11 now, but he was 10 at the time. I just walked past him, and I was like, hey, can you open your mouth, like, as far as you can? And, Cause like the the day before he was just like showing how stretchy his skin was, and I, I was like, what what the fuck are you doing? But then <laughs> the next day I was like, hey, can you do that again, please? <laughs> He's like, sure. I was like, cool. But yeah, it's I guess pages like this are really just whenever you finish reading, you just tie it all in, you know? Um, next page, I guess. There's not a lot to it. Mainly, it's just like whatever the reader gets from it, you know. And hopefully they get something. I think it's, I think it's just whatever they come up with, you know. Like I guess my initial intentions are gonna, you know, to like cover, you know, sexual harassment and everything that entails with that. But if, well, if they hate it or if they just get something totally different, I guess in my eyes, as long as it's positive, you know, that's what matters to me. If they fucking hate it, you know, like it is what it is. But I'm still gonna put out what I believe in, if that makes sense. But if I want people, I want them to just take it however they take it, you know? I don't wanna, I don't want them to feel obligated ever, you know? And I guess if um, my art, if I want me as an artist to be separate, um, do you mean like, if you want me to, if I want to I be known like, as an artist? No, no, more like a, um, let's see here. Like, let's say, just because it's always easy. Like, let's say Kanye is a fucking asshole. Kanye? You know, yeah, he's a maniac, <laughs> fucking psycho, right? Blah, blah. I mean, Kanye is my favorite artist. So, like, with his recent shit, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like to pay attention to it. I got pissed off the other day because um, the judge who uh, took over the Epstein related case, like, I don't know if you saw it, but they had uh, her son, her 20 year old son, got killed and. Her husband got shot, and I think he was critically injured. But it all ties into her being a judge, and it's over, like, sex trafficking, and, you know. And then, like, that was, like, 
trending, but it wasn't like the headline, you know? But it was like serious shit. And then later that evening, like Kanye said a bunch of like stupid shit, like that, you know? And I, th I like acknowledge that, you know, he's going through whatever, but he's on a social media platform that, you know, like they do know him as the artist who makes good music, but they also like see him as like a creative genius, I guess is like the aura that he has. So people gravitated to that a lot faster than they did the real life. Not to say that what he did wasn't real life, but I feel in that situation, sex trafficking is more serious than, you know, him tweeting. Does that make sense? No, yeah. So I feel like in that sense, I think the art should just be the art, you know? And I feel like, but it's just weird because people like are going to gravitate to it eventually, you know? kind of like algorithms and everything you know like i i talked to rob about this a while ago but we were saying how like trends can go like from black lives matter for like two weeks right it's huge and then it transitions to something else but like that's still going on you know like protests are still happening but the way social media is like it's on to the next thing you know like it's just like cnn or fox news it, they have to move on but i don't think that I feel like a lot of people don't take the time to focus on everything, you know? And in that situation, like for Kanye, for example, I just feel like not enough people paid attention to the judge when they should have, but a celebrity and like a public figure, like Kanye is, you're gonna go to that first, you know? So I feel like as an artist, he, or just as a person, he could have like just been more aware of that. But again, like it's, I don't also think it's his fault, you know? Cause a lot of, it was people's own decision to go to that instead of to go to this. Yeah, I think it does suppress, but it's not always intentional, you know? And I think that's what sucks. And it's unintentional because I think that falls on like us, like, you know, like the general like population or whatever. And does that make sense? Like we kind of just gravitate towards celebrities. That's kind of like, become a different norm in itself you know and i think that sucks because like when whenever you're an artist you know you can't help but express yourself but you also don't realize that you're overshadowing something else you know because i think with for example kanye what he's done just in the last couple of weeks i feel like some of it has been productive and some of it has just not and that's for us to decide like he you know with the running for president and everything I never took it serious, but he posted on his Twitter, like, here's a link to go register to vote, right? And I think that was important because a lot of younger people probably clicked that link and registered. And so instead of voting for Kanye, if they, you know, like really educated themselves, you know, they could, you know, Trump or Biden in this case, you know? I Personally, I think voting is important because... It, I mean, it's just our country, so <laughs> might as well like try to be productive for it, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, because I mean, registering to vote, you can vote for some, you know, it's not just the president. You can vote for like congressmen, senators, like a mayor, you know? I think what I think with voting is important is just starting small scale, you know? Because like, I feel like with politics, the idea of politicians being people is like taken away. You know, like the only reason they're there or the obvious reason is that people voted for them. You know, like, yeah, like people can like pull strings or you may have connections, but it's ultimately up to us. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like people don't look at that. They say, oh, like four years later, who's president? You know, but you could have done so much other shit in that time, you know? But I just think that also, if people like thought in that aspect, you know, and like in the aspect of like educating themselves more, other shit wouldn't happen you know like social media wouldn't be as prevalent as it was as it is right now but does that make sense yeah for sure all right let's go to the next page that's I, that's the beauty of this magazine that's or at least for part, me you know I mean? yeah like um page i guess 32 is up next one thing i also kind of wanted to like as i developed the project i kind of just wanted to talk about um the insecurities that men have you know, or just kind of touch upon men in that light, you know? And um, I just like the two, the two lines at the beginning. 
um because me i feel like i it was like a self uh self-reflection poem and i wanted to put myself into it and with me i'm a very quiet person um i I don't know. I feel like I get quiet in certain situations, especially if I feel like um, the man I'm with is like dominant, you know, like their personality is just more outspoken, vocal, whatever. I'll be like recessive. And so, I, is that the right word? Recessive? Or I'll be pa passive, you know, like just quiet. And, but I wrote it because uh, I had just, I don't know, I had started developing a weird um, like appreciation for men, I guess, and, you know, like, not in, like, uh, a sexual way, but just, like, the way they interact and the way they come off, I started getting attracted to, like, whether they're, like, a hard worker, like, a traditional man, you know, like, provides for their family and whatnot, or, like, a more, like, creative or ad abstract person, you know, like, they all have their details that just, I gravitate to, I guess, but all those people are, would be dominant to me, if that makes sense. And so, the last line saying, I'm so glad he's a man, is just, I guess, like, when men have that, like, niche, you know, like, what they do, like, whether it's music, writing, providing, you know, it can provide a certain level of comfort, I guess. And not just in this poem, kind of in a few other poems, I wanted to convey that, if that makes sense. And it was something that I didn't know if I was comfortable with, because... Not that I didn't want to come off as gay, but I didn't want it to directly go to that, you know? I wanted to, to just be seen as, like, a level of appreciation, you know? And, yeah, that's why I wrote that. I just, I want it to be, for me, I just want people to feel comfortable, like, appreciating, you know? And, like, being outspoken about what they like, you know, and not having to feel constricted by, like, what will be labeled as, you know? And, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to, like, rant about it. Let's go to, um, 40. 40. Yeah, 40, I think, would be good for this. I mean, it's hard to, like, see the lettering. So I guess it'll be for people who have the magazine. You know, like, they'll understand it. But <laughs> in the second stanza, um, snore your blunt as I question my sexuality. That one, I'll tell like like a short anecdote. I was um, I was at a lake house, um, and there's like the one complete cabin, and there's one that's in progress. But the one in progress is like where you go to smoke or just get away from all the people. And um, the I was with a couple couple people. One guy, um, who he's like in his thirties, right? And I'm close with him. But, um, we were smoking, and we were at the end of the blunt, and, um, he started snorting it. And at that point, I was just, again, quiet, and just observing everything. So I was just sitting, I was like, holy shit. You know, like, because I've never, like, really seen anyone do that. But he was so confident in it, and he was just snorting it, and he's like, ah, it burns. And then he would just, like, do another rip, and I was just like, this is incredible. You know, like, I'm so in awe of what you're doing right now. And, th and, um, the picture, um, for that page is in his garage. And I feel like his garage, his garage is just like anything you ever need done, the tools are in that garage, you know? And that's just kind of the man that I see him as, like, not traditional, but he can provide and he can work, you know? But he has, like, that side of him to where, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can just kill, like, he just does shit like that. And so I was just so fascinated about it that I just wanted to talk about it, you know? But I, it wasn't, like I said, as I questioned my sexuality, but looking back on it, I wasn't at all, you know? Cause I'm confident in my sexuality, but I was so like in awe of him doing that, you know? Like, I don't, I don't want to use the word attractive, but it was just like, holy shit. You know, like I would, I could watch you do that well, for hours. Like, uh... Yeah, it's just being like in tune with like your actual thoughts, you know? like. You're not contradicting yourself and your thoughts, you're just actually thinking it, you know? And there's no bias to tell you otherwise. And like, even as we're talking now, it's like more clear that it, it, no relation to sexuality. You know, like for some, yes, but like for other men and for, you know, like other women, if you just 
are, are unappreciative and like respectful and aware person you know like you can just realize that and not have like internal conflict over it you know and if that was a norm just be like oh it's just like it's just a thought dude you know and a lot of people do that it's just on a higher level it gets morphed and manipulated and then it can go back to that person and they'll think it's wrong you know and that's like however many years ago that's what was going on like if you did something that was questionable or like borderline a different sexuality you know like you were like suppressed and like discriminated against and like probably beat up or god knows what you know and it just the way it is now like we have like the potential to not have that at all and it's just like capitalizing on it capitalizing on like a lot of shit you know like sex trafficking and you know like objectification of women that's like what i want to capitalize on you know but that's <laughs> and it all comes from like eight lines of like poetry but like that's like the complete thought process behind it with this like because this is this isn't going to be like the only thing i put out but i want it with me i believe like the only way to really change something is by being consistent at it you know so like work like this and not just for me but from like other people and even if it just becomes like daily conversation it's still consistent and if it's talking about you know just what's in the magazine like real subjects then i feel like they'll slowly fade out if that makes sense um i guess we can go to the next page all right I hope this video doesn't sound like a bummer, you know, like, the, <laughs> because, like, it's not, like, full of laughter, but it's, like, you know, like, what I care about. No, yeah. no that's I mean, why I'll rock. Bummer or not bummer, it'll be passionate, and that's yeah. probably more important. Um, actually, actually, I guess we can just go to those pages. Let's do it. And, so, page 42 and 43. These are obviously supposed to be paired up together, right? Yes. Okay. Um, is this the same person? Is this a girl on the left and a guy on the right? Like, oh, that's me and both. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> um, no, yeah. For sure. Tell me more. Okay, where are you at? The thrift store? Goodwill. The big dressing room, you know? Um, but yeah, I just... At the time, I was getting a lot of, uh... Not negative, but feedback that didn't agree with me wearing women's clothes because it came off you know it may came off like i am gay or you know just like convey the wrong message and i didn't agree with that feedback but i wanted to like i don't know i still wanted to continue doing it you know because i didn't see a problem with it but so i took the pictures in the dress or whatever um but on the poem on page 42 um, it kind of ties back to rape, I guess, like, the same lines, um, like, saying chains around my neck is, I wanted it to come off like I was being restricted, I guess, like, being restricted by those words, like, saying, like, ah, like, that's just, it's weird, you know, it's, like, uncomfortable to look at, but I was like, why, <laughs> like, what, do you have, like, an actual reason, or is it just, like, the way that everyone else thinks about it and um so the line before before that saying i bow to my own illness hate consumes me um it was just like developing those insecurities you know but like i want i wanted to wear women's clothes just because i thought it looked cool and i feel like you know it's just i didn't see a problem with it but because like it had like the negatives behind it I was insecure about it, and I was like, fuck, <laughs> like, what do I do, you know, like, I just want to, like, be myself, and I feel like that's, like, a very cliche thing to say, but when everyone experiences it in their own, like, situation, it is that, you know, like, how can I just, like, feel comfortable with myself, I just, I think everyone just always has something to say, you know, like, going off what you say, everyone just finds a reason to dislike something, you know, like, there, there was a, a really quick the page page 11 and 10 and 11 is a simple picture right and like posting it on twitter no context what context whatever um people like hated the shit out of it for no like so many comments like just saying like why why the fuck is she next to a toilet and like this is like how she's gonna get corona 
and just like dumb shit like that but and it's on a small scale you know and that was like within the span of a day so like higher scale like what you're saying like with someone like j cole or whatever any artist in any like field they deal with that you know and it just sucks because like why do you have to like waste your breath <laughs> just being negative but it just shit like that to me is like does make me angry i guess or it just makes me frustrated at least you know like whatever it literally whatever field people just have something negative to say and i don't think people realize like in the moment like what they're contributing to you know because like and i i don't like using twitter as such a prime example because i hate twitter but that's just like the prime example of like <laughs> where all that happens you know like every day like you can like check like the trending and it's like someone is over party right and sometimes it's like justified but a lot of the times it's just unprovoked and it's just people like bored and like when they're bored they choose to be negative instead of like being productive and positive you know and i don't know why i started talking about that but no, that's, that's, that's what i think that's, that's what i think about that about, about i i mean i guess starting off i think that platforms like twitter you know facebook uh instagram in general like they're platforms that have potential to like for artists and for people who have a message like something positive to say and that's like the perfect outlet you know that's the perfect way to like grow an audience and you know like that's how i know like everyone in this room is through instagram but i feel that because it has so much potential it has potential for the downside you know and that's what sucks and that's what's bittersweet but with how i think now i wish that the apps would just you know like disappear you know and just just because of like it's being wasted you know and i feel like a lot of good can come from it and a lot of good does come from it you know like with like organizing a protest or just like exploiting something that's evil you know and that, that's like what it's meant for but i feel like it gets overwhelmed by the negatives of it and yes like i'm guilty of still going to the platform like you know like every morning but i'm going i'm trying to like search and you know like it does educate me you know sometimes and like yes like the argument is like just ignore it but it's like not addicting but it's like i wish people it's like making me form opinion about other people and like seeing what they do so that I can write about it and like say why I don't like it, you know? Cause like me just saying right now that I don't like it, it's not gonna just make the app go away. So I just wanna be consistent enough to where like, not I can change the app, but I can like change the, the mindsets of the people who like use it. I know it's like drastic to say like, I wish the app would disappear, but it's more like everything that we're exposed to, like all like, real life matters you know i wish that so like you could be a creative and you know do your own shit but those matters would be a focal point too you know like a consistent focal point because with how like with all it's such a prime example like whenever george floyd was murdered and like the countless others that was like i feel like this time period it blew blew up so much and got the intention that it needed that a lot happened not as much uh, that needed to happen but something really happened from it and that's like the prime positive that you can take out of like social media you know because it's like you see every like creator like promoting that you know and like they put like their work aside to focus on that you know what i'm saying so that's like the most ideal example i can think of in terms of social media except when it drops off you know and it's not a trend anymore and pe and it's on to the next subject you know if people and it, i'm i feel like i'm like blaming other people but it's just like the idea behind it if everyone was just consistent with everything going on then everything would change you know and it would change and it wouldn't go back to normal you know and I don't know, that's, I just don't want everything to be inevitable in a way to go back to the way that it used to be. Cause we're, we're so like, like this is the most current moment in time, but the same thing is happening now that happened 70, 60 years ago, you know? So like, when is it actually gonna change for the better? If that makes sense. 
do you think uh, social media can give like a false sense of progress and maybe some kind of yeah. gratification for shit and maybe that's why people move on so quick? Um, well, I think it just takes a lot of energy out of people, you know, to consistently, you know, not say the same thing, but have the same message every day. And I also think on the audience aspect of it, you don't, I don't think people want to look at that every day. Or, and I think that's where sometimes like it has to move on from social media and just, you know, you have to like be in real life with those people. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't know how to like really develop that thought, but I just feel like if people were just more interactive in person as well, then it would hold potential for it to be productive, if that makes sense. It's like a really scrambled thought process, but it, it's just because there's so many details in everything. You know, like everything that I think about is an issue, like there's countless others, you know? And so it, it can be very draining and that's why it can drop off, you know? And it sucks because like a lot of beliefs that you can have, you know, towards politics, uh, at least me personally, like I'm like scared as shit to like express like my like political views like on a platform because like I just think it'll be taken the wrong way and it'll ultimately like have a negative impact on me because people won't like people won't be like hey like why do you believe that instead they'll just like bash it you know I feel like that's what happens on like a bigger scale which is frustrating so it's like I don't know the establishment and like the system sucks but like the people at times aren't any better so like who are you to say anything you know if you can't contribute to it in a like a civil way either i guess it's uh, like a more elaborate version of um i guess page 13 uh 14 and 15. i guess it's a more elaborate in-depth take on it and it, i after rinsing myself rinsing myself after dull sex um and just talking about like taking a shower you know like after having sex with whoever and then in the last stanza saying loneliness electrified by the, by the woman um I, th I it's just like a short little like in real life like 15 minute story of like just having sex you know because it's like it's just i guess it gives you like that little adrenaline rush or it's just like something that you want to do you know and it's in a way like it can be a distraction and but it's still regardless it's fucked up you know and from my perspective or this poem's perspective it was dull and it doesn't really mean anything other than you know like i'm unhappy and i'm lonely so i'm just gonna i want to have sex tonight you know but from the woman's perspective you know like she could be really interested in me or like you know like there's just two different sides to it and with the poem is like i wanted to show that there it should be mutual you know like there shouldn't be that aspect of just having sex to have sex because then you know like on a bigger scale it's you know like, even on a small scale it's just objectifying them you know and it can happen vice versa but it's just i'm a guy so that's the way i view it yeah i can see it. it's it kind of like touches over each aspect like in each like two lines each stanza i guess like glass chin i don't i don't fucking know like sometimes with these titles like i'd have one because like whenever i was like almost finished with it i'd have like the set titles but then i move it around or give something a different name so i just like whatever was in my head at the time that somehow tied into the poem you know so probably glass balls i don't i can't remember why i was thinking of it you know like my favorite uh, like paid page 27 it was like piss me off i'll come on your sister like that was just like the worst insult that i could think of at the time and i it was just i thought of that because like i just wanted to be disrespectful but i think before that it was called peaches you know <laughs> like so that's like the titles i don't know titles don't does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's just another opportunity to involve it. I think I wanted to do 44 as well. Oh, yeah, 44. Yeah. Bastard. That one... This one's another short one. I don't know if you have a question for it, but, um... I think that sometimes, like, sex especially can become, like, a vicious cycle. 
and it can just be something that unfolds and just happens for whatever reason. And um, so that's the the first line. Like you'll still like you'll still sit your sweet ass on my face. Like even though we aren't like pure i guess like we're still gonna like have sex we're still you know like, we still have like that enjoyment for it but not for like pure reasons and that's why the last line says you and i and uh you and i is handmade heaven and um i got that from a song i forget her name but it's just you can find comfort comfort in someone for reasons that may not be mutual if that makes sense like going going into it if i meet a girl like i that i just want to have like that um emotionless sex with or just dull sex with but then like we form like a comforting each other that's not just that it's like i like you but I, i'm not sure why and it may not be for the best reasons you know not sexual but just like them as a person and i don't really know how that ties into the message of the magazine but it's something that I think is like there. And it's something that I've experienced, I think. You know, like, you can just get caught up in everything and it may just take a detour. Oh shit, um, 46? This one, I guess, is hard to read again, but it'll be for people who have the magazine. Um, the second stanza, I guess what stands out to me is saying, uh, reminding me of a father. And I don't know, like, the science behind, like, my insecurities or whatever. Because I do think it does come down to science at some point. But with me, I didn't have, like, the like the best... Or, at the time, I didn't have, like, the most obvious, like, caring father. So I was, like, upset about it. You know, like, it just became, like, a, a thing that I wanted and was upset that I didn't have. And so, again, tying back to anger and saying like that I hate his voice but I also think in some way it's made me like how we were talking about appreciating men in like a different um like just appreciating a man for something that he has to offer and not necessarily being sexually attracted towards it I feel like the way that I've like grown into that is from like the lack of like having like a supportive dad at the time you know like, he was present and I'm thankful for that but it wasn't like a healthy relationship, if that makes sense. And um, then going from reminding me of the father to um, saying she gives me uh, moments of peace and then saying, why do I yell? And uh, I think that like the I wrote that because I feel like not just for me, but a lot of people like have like their source of like anxiety, and, um, like depression or anger and it's you don't always know like how to control it i guess you know like you just have like certain triggers that set you off and make you like mine's like family environments like i can't like be in them without freaking out you know and i wanted to somehow put that into writing and talk about how like if you have like your trigger if you have that thing that like fucks you up somehow like you have to i guess acknowledge it and be vulnerable to it in order to like you know like somehow like get past it you know with me like like uh like and I, this isn't like for people watching it to like show sympathy but like i've like been kicked out of my own home twice and i'm like on the verge of getting kicked out again but it's like it sucks but it's like at the same time i still just like want my dad you know what i'm saying like i i'm still i hold on to like that string of hope i guess that like he'll like one day just like change you know what i'm saying and it's not to say like he doesn't have his moments of being like loving and like a dad because he's had those moments but like i've had to like really like dig deep to try to find it you know and like under because like he's come from like another set of like bad parents so i can't blame him too much but it's still like that thing that you want and when you want it and you can't get it you know like you get upset about it and you, it can cause anger you know what i'm saying and so like that's just I don't know. that's like the main reason for this particular poem and i i guess i uh, i talked about it in the three hours when the one that says snort your blunt it says my father the next line says my father never looked me in the eyes and it's just details like that showing like why you know like details like that can make you understand motives more i guess 
I, I don't know if I talk about him again. I want to, like, in future projects, because I feel like that has a heavy impact. But yeah. Um, I will, like, let's say you fucking watch this shit somehow. Let's say you fucking stumbled upon this shit. God knows when, 10 years from now, 10 days right. from now, 10 hours from now, right? All these conversations shit. What the fuck would you want to say to him? Like, not bad, but, you know what I mean? But just like, hey, motherfuckers, paying attention. Here's what else I got to say. Um, well, I mean, the th- <laughs> he, I, uh, I gave him this magazine, like, I, I, like, he read it, you know, like, he looked through it, and I don't think he read it, like, you know, like, in depth, because he would have, like, clicked with the lines, maybe, or at least been like, why'd you write about me, you know, but he, he, like, said, um, he was like, I don't understand it, and it's, like, foreign to me, but, like, it came from you. You know, and that was like a month ago, I guess. But that was like, yes, like you know, like that's I like needed that, you know, for you to say to me. And so if he was to watch this now, I just hopefully he'd say the same thing. And instead of like getting angry at me for like you know like dissing him, I guess he'd like look to understand it, you know, instead of just get mad. Cause I feel like you know that's that'd be the easy thing to do if anyone says anything about you, you know. I mean, that's that's gonna be, you know anger but then also you know part of the anger is definitely a sign that it's working yeah you know it's the first response to like accountability and responsibility yeah. like you know what i mean yes yeah, i mean it's like it's your son you know or it's your daughter you know it's like i guess we have like our subconscious ways of like reaching out you know i i feel like i do it like plenty of times you know like i have my ways that aren't always direct like this like you know i don't know how to really go into it Cause I don't really understand like all of it yet. I've been trying to, but I don't know. I just would hope he wouldn't be angry at me, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I mean, you want to go to the next poem? Yeah. <laughs> um. So page forty-eight. All it says is "May the women have mercy," but I just think that women have like a really forgiving nature, naturally, and I think again that's why like. We don't hear about, you know, a lot of people tell their stories about rape and sexual harassment, but I think they're scared to say something, but I think a lot of women are just like forgiving. Not in like a traditional, like, oh, it's okay that you raped me, but like, there's just something like sweet about them. You know, like just something naturally pure. And not to like kiss y'all's ass or anything, but like just to like say that like, I genuinely think that that's how women are, you know, and men too, but I just, again, from my perspective, like, it's just, there's some, something forgiving about them, and I feel like men in general just do, like, a lot of shitty things, you know, just, like, impulsively or just because, like, that's what they've grown to be, or they're immature and don't take responsibility, but, I don't know, I, it's super short, but, like, after having read, like, an entire magazine, like, I feel like that's one line that kind of, like, would hit home, you know? And again, that's uh, the teeth of a seven-year-old. He's seven now, but he's six. But shout out Liam for whenever he watches this. <laughs> but yeah, that's like, that's just like, that concludes the magazine. And then like, more pictures of a topless woman that will get blurred out because it's YouTube. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, <I> but, <laughs> and it's... I forgot. Maybe we won't get reported. <laughs> Flagged. Yeah. I mean, for like the body of the magazine, I guess that's it. Cool. Yeah, we covered the fucking meat of it. Uh, let's go on the back page. Um, the back page, I got permission to tell this story. Um, it was inspired by someone who's talked to me throughout the magazine, but her name's Haley. And um, she was telling me the story about how she, I, she was either with her mom or her grandma, and they were just like going about their business. And at the time, she was like young, you know, like 10 or younger around that age but um some older man like just like was walking by and he complimented the mom or grandma he's like hey like you have like a really like attractive daughter you know it's like she's like gonna be really good for a man one day that that's what he actually said he says she'll be good for a man one day and then he proceeded to just say that she had nice breasts and (laughs) it was it's such a like weird thing to you know like approach two women and say 
but it was just natural to him like he didn't feel like it was wrong like he was trying to be nice you know and all the mom grandma said was thank you she was just like thanks <laughs> like thanks for complimenting like my heavily underage you know daughter here and but it was just it that's all it was it was just like a normal instance of like like casual objectification you know like in passing and i feel like that happens a lot you know just like even like on a bigger scale you know we can just be like oh like she has like a nice ass like i fuck her for sure you know and it's not just like us saying that to a person it's that we think it you know and that's kind of like the mindset and like i'm guilty of it you know but it's just it's fucked up regardless and you're not gonna get that from like the back cover i don't think but that's just the thought process behind it and it's so simple but it's so prevalent and that's really it. that's i just wanted to mention that story for the back cover because i feel like <laughs> people are just objectified every day and it's kind of just like a simple thing and yeah i like kind of turned it into a joke but i really just want to mock it so if you like only look at a girl and think that she has a nice ass or nice tits and that you'd fuck her like you're an asshole <laughs> i don't like you and i wrote this magazine to say fuck you and if you're a girl and you just look at men for like dick fuck you too and you're part of the problem that's my little side note to the audience, directly to the audience. But <laughs> if you're an asshole, like I wrote this for you. <laughs> so my next project is, um, it's called Shalom, which is Hebrew for it's a it's a welcoming word, but it's a, it also means peace, and I feel like that's gonna be a motive for the comic. Um, but it's just directly and heavily on sex trafficking you know more objectification you know child trafficking and just not what goes on behind the scenes because it's out there for everyone to see right now and i just want to put my mark on it and my thought press on that my thought process on it and yeah something to look forward to all right what's your name and uh you know fucking what's that oh yeah thousand plus you gotta mention the show how your name <laughs> Uh, I'm Chase Cheney, and I just finished my episode with a uh, thousand plus. Thank you, and this is gonna blow up. <laughs> the plot, a thousand plus is gonna blow up. It's meaningful. If you're an artist who has a message, hit up Andy. Like, if you want to promote your message, this is your platform. This is the way to do it. And yeah, don't miss out. Fucking tight. All right, thanks, man. Let's get some fucking B-roll. B-roll. <laughs> he's over there now. Right. I mean, like Rob and you know November Soul are like I like those right now. And it's not just because they're right there, but like, <laughs> you know, like I mean, like Good Morning is like. I don't listen to it, I haven't listened to it as much, but like there was like a solid two week period to where like that was like my morning song, you know, and then like House of Soul I like, and that's like, that's like two, like I, show, I sent a video to Rob, but it was like, I was with my friend and we were just like in bed, like watching YouTube, and then I was like, like, you know, like we'd show each other music, I'd be like, put this on, please, you know, like, really? <laughs> Awesome. Was I interrupted? Of course you are, dude. You say this is the money. Drink some money, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so, that and uh, a lot of like UK rap <laughs> right now. Like, <laughs> uh, like. Bro, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, it just happened. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Shout out uh, Unknown P. If you all don't know who that is, y'all need it. I like Kanye, he's my favorite artist. Um, 
Ramirez is good too. If y'all know who Ramirez is, y'all should. He has a good out. Hey boy. He doesn't know how to get through though. <laughs> He's like, fuck. So, like, how many times have I accidentally got in a relationship? Happens like all the time to me. <laughs> <laughs> this year is like probably one of like the worst years for me like, to be around because you you're exposed to like everything oh! that's happening. I got into poetry, yeah. Um I probably would butcher his name, but Pablo Neruda. He's a, a poet that I like, and he was like a politician, and he kind of just did poetry on the side. And it was really interesting to learn about him because he, his life is so interesting. It doesn't make sense, like, poetry doesn't make sense for it to fit into his life, if that makes sense. But he still did it, just because, like, that was his outlet, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, him and really him, yeah. He's like the one poet that I've really read about. I don't really dive into, like, artists like that, I guess, in like writing, because I don't really read that much. I, I haven't, I'm not really, I haven't gotten into that quick clip in a while, but I will, though, I need to. <laughs> what page is it? Also, it doesn't have to be recorded, but Colt, um, I went back to your album the other day, and, uh, I was bumping Cadillac a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was on YouTube too last night, or the other night, and I fucking went to, like, Station 33 and the underground session that y'all had, and... Dude, I fucking love it. Like, I, I wasn't really knowing, like, what to expect. But then it started, I'm like, shit, that's dope. <laughs> and whenever I, remember when I sent you, you and Donnie that beat? He, uh, his name's Justin, and he's, like, trying to get into it. But he wants, like, the whole setup. So I sent it to him for, like, because you had, like, the beat pad and everything. Like, so check this out, like, this is, like, you hope to beat this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just enjoy yeah, it. Enjoy it. <laughs> she's nice to be on TV. She's, she's nice to I was thinking about that too the other day. I was like, these guys film like everything. <laughs> I, was, I was like, we got everything filmed. And then we missed like a million other shits. I was like, like I, was, I, was, I was like, I was like, in real life, like I'm like getting to know them, you know, like I'm, you know, like I've only been around like so many times, but like I've seen, you know, like so many other like aspects, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, it's just cool. Just hope, like, you go on the fucking shit and you get, like, a, a decent enough representation of who I am. Like, by watching the shit. Like, we, the TMI today, like, that's gonna be as, as us as it gets. It's down to really? paint. Yeah, I, I saw that. I was gonna ask. I wouldn't have to paint. Like, why so the like, fuck are you blue? It, so I got enough paint. And then, like, he's high as fuck. I'm right on the blast. <laughs> so the I wanted to ask you. <laughs> I was like, why, why are you like on like your Brockhampton shit, like all blue? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's just other shit. This motherfucker was peeling the skin off last night. Yeah. <laughs> just like, that's us. It's always something in the cowboy jersey. Always something. I already know what the fuck going on. You heard me? You heard me? Hey, you heard me? You heard me? Scene one, Apple take two.